this video we're going to talk about how to find your own parameterization for surfaces. So in some of the problems we'll do in the rest of the chapter, you will be given a parameterization for a surface, but other times you'll need to find a parameterization for a surface. So we're going to just look at a little bit of kind of basics of how to do that. So remember your goal is that you would want some x as a function of u and v, y as a function of u and v, and z as some function of u and v. Maybe also some intervals for those parameters that would give you the surface that you are interested in. And the important thing to understand here is, first of all, you don't have to use u and v. There are times where you might prefer to use different letters besides u and v, but most of the formulas that we have later in the chapter refer to u and v, so it's sometimes convenient to do those. The other thing to understand about this is that parameterizations of surfaces just like parameterizations of curves are not unique. So they perhaps induce a different motion along the surface, but the actual points on the surface could be the same even with different parameterizations. So we'll look at that when we look at some examples here. All right, so the first way we're gonna talk about to find a parameterization of a surface is just to use an x, y, z equation. And then you would just let x be u and y be v, or some other variable, one of them be u and one of them be v, and then you can write your equation for z in terms of the other variables. So for example, I have an equation of a plane written down here, 2x plus 3y minus 4z equals 12, and one way to get a parameterization for that would be to just let x be u and y be v, and then solve for z, in my equation of my plane with u in place of x and v in place of y. All right, so you can see over here, I did some scratch work where I put in u in place of x and v in place of y and then solve for z. And so what I have over here is a nice parameterization for that plane. And if I want the whole plane, I will let u go all the way from negative infinity to infinity and v go from negative infinity to infinity. So again, this parameterization is not unique. I could also parameterize that plane pretty easily by choosing to let y be u and z be v. So that would be another parameterization for the same plane, and there's really infinitely many parameterizations of the plane. And in general, neither of these two parameterizations is necessarily better than the other, so it's perfectly fine to use one versus the other for a parameterization of a plane. All right, let's look at some other surfaces here. All right, so I've written down here near the bottom of the screen an equation for a paraboloid. This is a paraboloid with vertex at the origin that opens up, and it is already written in explicit form. It's solved for z. So one way, an easy way to parameterize this would be just to let x be u and y be v, and then our z just falls right out. We'll just put u in place of x and v in place of y. And so that's a perfectly good parameterization for that paraboloid. Um, but this is one that also has another fairly nice parameterization that maybe leads to some other ideas that we'll talk about too. And that is that you might want to leverage some of the other coordinate systems that we've worked with, like polar, cylindrical, or spherical coordinates. In polar coordinates, we would let x be r cosine theta and y r sine theta. And so I there have x as a function of two variables and y as a function of two variables. I could just use r and theta for my inputs, for my parametric equations, or you can convert those to u's and v's. So I could let x be u cosine v and y be u sine v. And then in order to get the z for this paraboloid, I would just substitute those in x and y in my equation and simplify. All right, so I've written down over here an equation of a cone, the top half of a cone with vertex at the origin. And so one way I could do that is using x, y equations. So I could let x be u and y be v, and then z is square root of u squared plus v squared. And that's a perfectly fine parameterization of that cone. The only difficulty with that parameterization is that at the step when I go to take some partial derivatives of x, y, or z, and in particular z, with respect to u and v, I run into a little bit of trouble with those partial derivatives. And so 
This is one where perhaps a different parameterization, and, and in particular one using polar coordinates, is a little bit more helpful. So if instead I let x be u cosine b again, and y be u sine b, and then I can find an equation for z in terms of u and b. So I'm just using polar coordinates with u in place of r and v in place of theta. All right, so uh, we'll get z equals u, and if I just want the top half of that cone, uh, I will let u go from 0 to infinity, and v really only needs to go from 0 to 2 pi to go all the way around that cone, just thinking about u in terms of the r and v in terms of the theta. So this is the first one I've written down some intervals for. Uh, let's look at some more where maybe we want to think about some intervals. Okay, so for this one, instead of starting with an equation, I have a description of our surface that we're interested in here. And because I have circles in the xy direction, that might be a clue that perhaps polar coordinates or cylindrical coordinates would be helpful to you. The other thing about this problem is that I don't really have the whole cylinder, I just have the cylinder up till z equals 4, so we'll want to put some restrictions on our variables. Alright, so when I think about polar coordinates x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta, since my cylinder is radius 3, so I'm not going to let that r be a variable here, that will be fixed. Notice that on the paraboloid and on the cone that I did before, that r gets bigger as you go up the cone, but here the r is fixed at 3, and then I'm just going to let theta be u or v, I'll let that be u, and then z is just going to go up and down, and so z can be my other parameter, v in this case, and for this one I'll want to go ahead and set up some intervals for my variables, so u is acting like theta, so u will go from 0 to 2 pi, and v will go from 0 to 4, so that I just have the portion of that cylinder that goes up to 4. And again, this is not a unique parameterization, there are other ways to do that, but this is a pretty simple one that has pretty easy derivatives to work with, which we'll need when we do some integration with these. Alright, let's get one more here. So again, I just have a description of my surface here, not an actual equation for that. And since we have a sphere, we might think about using spherical coordinates as a good way to start. So I've written down here the conversion formulas between x, y, z coordinates and spherical coordinates. So I have three variables there as input variables, and remember I just need two, u and v. So I can't really just directly use this, I need to think a little bit about the surface. So again, on this one, just like with our cylinder on the previous one though, one of these variables is actually constant. So our sphere has radius 6, and remember that's what the row represents, so I'm just going to put 6 in place of the row here, and that will give me a parameterization of our sphere. I'm going to use u's and v's, but you really could use v's and thetas. And then I will also want some intervals for my u's and v's, so u is acting like phi, and if you think about the sphere, and remember that phi going 0 to pi will take you from the positive z-axis down to the negative z-axis, so you just need phi equals 0 to pi, and so since I have u taking the place of phi in my equations here, we'll let u go 0 to pi, and v is acting like theta, so we will let that one go from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so there are lots more interesting surfaces that you can get with more complicated parameterizations, but that should be enough to help you do what you need to do for the rest of this chapter. Uh, if you have some time on your hands later though, it is kind of fun to play with these parameterizations and get more complicated equations and see what kind of really interesting surfaces you can get. We looked at some from Calcplot 3 d on the last video, so those are some kind of fun places to start, and then maybe modifying those equations and see what you get.